So in our event emitter examples, the first thing we're going to look at is the first pattern that we talked about on the slides, which is the example where you actually instantiate an event emitter and return it from a function call. So here we have a get resource function, which takes in a number and returns an instance of an event emitter that emits three events, a start event, a data event, and an end event. This is a good demonstration of how these event names can be really whatever you want. In our slides, we had item and done and error. And here we have start and data and end. And what we're saying is whenever I see the start event, I want you to log this to the console. And whenever I see the data event, I want you to log this to the console, including the data that was sent. And then on the end event, let's log this to the console. And I, right now I've hidden the code inside this get resource function. Right now we're focusing on the subscribing part. But so for now, let's run this and see what we get. So we'll bring this up here. And so here you can see we have the I've started, which was the reaction to the start event. And then we got five data events and one end event that says I'm done. Now the five is because uh, we passed in five and that's how many that's the way this function is coded. Whatever number you pass in, that's how many data events you're going to get back. That was us subscribing to those events and printing something out to the console. Now let's take a look at the get resource function itself and see what it does. Now the first thing that it does is we instantiate a new event emitter. And you'll notice in order to do that, we had to require an event emitter. And by doing that, we used Node's built-in events module. Because we only wanted the event emitter from that events module, we specified that as part of the require and put that in our own event emitter variable. And so we instantiate one of those. And then now this process next tick is something we haven't seen before. In our first module, we looked at set timeout and set interval. And process next tick is similar, but what it really says is on the very next tick of the event loop, I want you to run this function. And in this example, we're really using that to emulate an asynchronous function because what we want is we want the return value here to be called before we start emitting events. And as would normally be the case um, if you were you know, talking to the file system or a database. So what we say is on the next um, tick of the event loop, I want you to emit a start event. It's our event emitter. We're emitting a start event. And then now we're going to set an interval. And what we're saying is every 10 milliseconds, I want you to execute this function. And in this function, we're emitting our data event. We're keeping account of how many data events we've emitted so far. We start at zero and then we keep a count. And if the count is equal to the number that was passed in, we're going to emit an end event and then clear that interval to stop the function from being executed. This is an example of the first pattern of using an event emitter. Now let's take a look at the second pattern.